All right, this video is going to go over exponents. Um, whether or not you realize that exponents are super duper important, especially as you get into higher level mathematics. So um, you definitely need to know this, so pay attention. All right, I'm going to go down the list here first, and then I'll show you some examples over here. Okay, anything to the power of zero has a value of one. So like, imagine x to the power of zero. It's just one. It's not x to the one, no, no, no. It's just one. So like even if it's a, a number like five to the zero is one, one to the zero is one, zero to the zero is one. Imagine it was like five x to the zero, this would be five because the five has a one. So it's really like five times one, which is five. Now, if it was like, 5x to the 0, this would be 1, but you'll learn that when we get to like these down here. <clears throat> okay, let's keep moving. The majority of times when you're doing exponents, you're going to be adding or subtracting them. Most people go wrong and they start multiplying these exponents just because they see multiply. No. Um, so basically, you have to have the same base. So these both have a. Um, and so like, look, what if it was like five squared times five to the three? The answer would be my base of five to the power of two plus three, so five to the five, like that. Now it doesn't have to be with numbers, you could do it with x's, whatever. So like if it was like x to the seven times x to the minus two, you'd be like, okay, that's x to the seven minus two which is x to the five. Now, if they don't have the same base, like x two times y three, then you can't do it. The answer is just x two y three. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, number three, I think it's missing a parentheses here. So basically everything has a one by default, if nothing's there. Now, power to a power, like number three or number four, see how it's power to a power? That's when you multiply these things. So it's really like, if you look back at number three, this n is gonna get like distributed to those exponents. So it's really like a to the, I guess I shouldn't do it there. It's like a to the one times n, b to the one times n, which turns into a to the n, b to the n. So like, imagine it was, 2x cubed. You would have to distribute that 3, and so it'd be like 2 cubed x cubed. And 2 cubed is 8, so to simplify this even further, you could call this 8x cubed. But this is what you need to know. Okay, now, same thing on number 4. It's a power to the power. This is when you multiply. So, like, imagine you had um, 2 squared cubed, this would become 2 to the 2 times 3, which is 2 to the 6. Okay, and if you wanted to get real technical, that's 64, but this is what you need to realize. Um, and so, like, it would even apply if, like, it was something like this, like 2x squared to the fifth, okay? The two technically has a one attached to it. And then you would have to do power to the power and multiply those powers. So it'd be like two to the one times five, x to the two times five, which would be two to the five, x to the 10. And two to the fifth is 32. So if you wanted to get technical, it's 32 x to the 10. Okay, let's keep moving. When something has a negative exponent, it changes sides in a fraction. So if you have your if you have your fraction with a number up here or an x or whatever, a number here, it's gonna be switching places. And then the exponent goes positive. So like if it was two to the negative two, this is technically over one, right? So you send it to the bottom of that fraction and it becomes a positive two. Two squared is four, so that's really one fourth if you want to get technical. Um, same thing if it's on the bottom already. So like imagine it was one over 
x to the negative 3. You would send it up to the top and call it x to the positive 3 on top. You could have the 1 on bottom. It doesn't matter. But it switches places in the fraction and becomes a positive exponent. Okay, now in terms of this one right here, yes, this is technically how you do it. But the way I do it is just I say, imagine it was like x7 over x3. All I do is I say, well, which one's bigger, the top or the bottom? The top, so put an x on top. How much bigger is it? It's bigger by four. Done. Or if it was like um, two cubed over two to the fifth, you'd say, okay, the bottom is bigger. So put the two on the bottom. How much bigger of an exponent? Five minus three is two. So it'd be like one over two squared, which is one fourth. And then the last one's another, basically, it's like the power to the power rule. These A's and B's have ones, and you're going to have to distribute to the top and bottom that N. So, like, imagine it was 2 over X. We'll call it 2 over X squared, actually, to the power of 3. They both get that exponent. So, the 2 has a 1 currently. So, it's like 2 to the 1 times 3 over x to the 2 times 3, which would be 2 cubed over x6. 2 cubed is 8, so if you wanted to get technical, you could call it 8 over x6. So those are the rules. And the best way to learn the rules is to just practice them over here. So let's look at some of these examples. All right. You want to treat numbers just normal. So let's say this is times, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm not sure, but 2 times 6 is 12, okay? Now, these exponents, though, the x's, you're just going to go, do not multiply them. Remember, this is like rule 2, where you have to add those exponents. The only time you ever uh, multiply them is would be like on number 4. See the power to the power rule? That's the only time. So... These right here, back to number one, you're just adding those exponents. So it's x3 plus 3, which is 12x6. Now, be advised, that 12 has a 1 currently. You don't have to put it, but it is there. Okay, so the next one, I'm doing like 4 times negative 2 first. That's negative 8. And now, a to the negative 3, a to the 5 is going to be a to the negative 3 plus 5. So this answer would be negative 8, A2. And again, that negative 8 has a 1 attached to it. Okay, same thing for number 3. Multiply the numbers. Negative 3 times negative 6 is 18. Then I have X4, X negative 7. So that's X to the 4 minus 7. So this is going to be 18, X negative 3. Now, this 18, why it's been so helpful to put the 1 every single time, the 18 has a 1, right? Well, this right here, this x negative 3, is rule 5. You can't have negative exponents. They don't like it. So what happens is it switches sides of the fraction. So the 18 stays on top. But now on bottom, the x negative 3 switched places and went to the bottom and became positive 3. This would be my answer, 18 over x cubed. Okay, now we get to some power to the power. Look, if you're doing a power to the power, it's so helpful to put the one if there's missing exponents. Like that three has a one attached to it. Why is it so helpful? Because now you're just gonna distribute this two, AKA multiply since it's power to the power. So it's gonna look like three to the one times two, x to the four times two, y to the five times two. So that's 3 squared x8 y10. And to be more exact, 3 squared is 9. So this is 9 x8 y10. And be advised that 9 has a 1 attached to it. Okay, this next one. I think they're missing parentheses here as well. So looking at this, the first thing I would do is I'd give the negative 2 the 1. Okay, and then I'd realize it's power to a power. And so you're going to distribute that 2. So it's going to look like this. Negative 2 to the 1 times 2. A 
to the negative three times two, b to the four times two. So that's gonna be negative two squared, a negative six, b eight. Now, there's a couple things you need to realize when you get here. You cannot have negative exponents. So this a negative six has to go to the bottom. You have to create a fraction and send it to the bottom. So it'd look like this. Negative two squared is still up top. B eight is still up top, but now a negative six becomes a positive six on bottom. Let me write that in green. So it becomes positive when you switch sides of the fraction like that. And to get even more technical to this, um, you could simplify that negative two squared and call it four if you wanted to. But um, yeah, let's just move on. Okay, this next one, I would reduce the 27 and the three first. So that's now nine over one. And then A7, A4, remember when I do this, I just say, which one's bigger, top or bottom? Well, the top is, by how much? Three, done. So it's nine A cubed over one. You don't have to put that over one. You can just call it nine A cubed. Okay, moving right along. Um, this next one's kind of the same thing. So you're gonna do eight divided by two first. That's four over one, four over one. Okay, now, Look at these x's. You have an x negative three on bottom. You have to send it to the top and call it x positive three and get rid of it on the bottom. So now you're sitting there with x4, x3 up top. You have to add those exponents because it's not power to a power. So x to the four plus three. And then y3 over y, be advised that's y1 on bottom so this is when you do the whole which is bigger top or bottom well the top is by how much by two so my answer here would be 4x 7y squared it's kind of a tricky one that green part's really important to understand okay now okay screen's jumping around All right, sorry about that. Number eight, I think it's missing parentheses. And um, give the four the power of the one. And you're gonna distribute the negative three. So it's gonna become, the, this is power to a power. So you're multiplying. So it's like four to the one times negative three, x to the two times negative three, y to the four times negative three. And so it's gonna become four to the negative three, x to the negative six, y to the negative 12. All right, now these, imagine it currently all over one. And you need to do that because all of these guys have negative exponents and you're gonna to have to send them to the bottom to become positive exponents. So my final answer here would be, there's nothing on top, so it's one on top. Then it's four cubed becomes positive x6, it becomes positive, and y12, it becomes positive. And if you wanted to get technical, 4 cubed is 64. So you could call it 64 on bottom. Okay, the next one I think is also missing parentheses. And so now we do power to a power, which means multiply them. So you're looking at x to the 3 times negative 4, y to the negative 2 times negative 4. So that's going to be x negative 12, y8. And then this, you should imagine it over 1 because this x negative 12 is going to jump to the other side. So my final answer here would be y8 over x12. Okay, this next one's pretty easy. Imagine it currently over 1. And then you just move these negative exponents to the bottom and they become positive, so B4 did not change. But now A is positive three on bottom, C has positive two on bottom. That one was easy. Okay, this next one. I love problems like number 11. Um, I just, I don't know, I'm weird like that, I guess. But anyways, I would start out with the A's. Which one's bigger, top or bottom? The bottom, by how much? Three. Okay, cool. 
Now the bees, you're gonna have to move this guy up to the top. So it's gonna be like B positive two up top. So you're sitting there with B5, B2, that's adding the exponents. Um, so it'll end up being B7, but I'm just showing my work there. And it's not multiplying them because it's not power to a power. Okay, and then on the contrary with the Cs, the C negative four has to go to the bottom and it becomes C positive four on bottom. So on bottom, you're sitting there with C4, C3, C4 plus three. So my final answer is B7 over A3, C7. Okay, let's look at this last one. I think it's missing parentheses here. And so you need to take care of this top first. You have a power to a power. Just give the nine its one and then distribute that two. So it's gonna look like nine to the one times two, x to the negative three times two, y to the five times two, and then the bottom doesn't change. And nine squared is 81, so I would probably um, simplify that as well. Negative six, okay. And so now I'd start with the 81 over three. 81 over three reduces to be 27. You can call it 27 over one if you want. Now, this x negative six has to go to the bottom and become x positive six. So on the bottom, you have x six, x four. So that's x six plus four. And then the y's, y10 over y7, which one's bigger? The top. By how much? By three. So my final answer here would be 27y cubed over x to the 10. So these are super, super important to know if you're going to go any further in mathematics. So I strongly advise you study these rules, and I hope this video helped.